What's going on guys? Welcome back to The Trank and today I don't have anything big planned but I got a nice day off and it's really nice out so I've got a piece of uh, monkey pod wood, whatever that is, monkey pod. Anyway it's a pretty nice piece here and I got some, I've got some hinges and there's not going to be any plans for this one because I'm just going to be, sometimes it's just nice to get out and make something so that's what we're going to do so let's get to it. So what I do here is start laying out the pieces for the outside of the box and I just start cross cutting those on the cross cut sled to rough dimension. They don't have to be dead on at this point because I'm going to be you know, cleaning them up and milling them up before doing that. So I like to take a hybrid approach for milling my lumber. So I start by bringing it to the power tools, the jointer, and I'll get a face and an edge uh, flat and perpendicular. And then I'll bring it to the planer of course and get the opposing face parallel. Uh, and then I like to bring it over and use the jack plane to really clean up those middle marks and get them dead flat because you're always going to have a bit of snipe or a bit of something from the power tools and you just can't get the finish that you can with the power tools that you can with the plane. So I just, I get as much done on the power tools as I can and that does the majority of the work but then the plane will get those dead flat surfaces especially before I bring it in to the table saw to get the other edge trued up. Now the monkey pod was pretty grainy to work with. You get these really thick, you know, t it's really prone to tear out, which is something I didn't like when I was working with it. But uh, once it was milled up, I bring it over to, again to the crosscut sled and clean up one end. And I'm just trying to conserve the material. So because this, I didn't have plans for this, I just, my plan was, okay, make, get rid of the least amount of material as I can, you know, so I can use this wood. So I clean up the ends and then put a stop lock and get them both cut to the same width. And then I do the same thing for the long size of the box, clean up an end, and then put up a stop lock, and then get cut those to the same size. And then I'm putting in here the dado for the bottom, which you'll see later isn't actually what ends up holding the bottom. But take a couple passes for those dados on the table saw, and just creep up on the fit for the bottom. Now it's finally time to put in the rebates, or if they're really dados in this case. Now I'm using the Kerf Maker. Now if you didn't see this in my last video, you got to be sure to check it out because it's a super awesome tool to have around your shop, especially if you cut a lot of dados on the table saw. And what you'll see here is first I'm making the first cut of the dado. And then what you do is you flip it over and without even creeping up or guessing or measuring, you just make that second cut confidently and then you come through and you hog out the rest of the material. And really I'm, I'm always surprised, but every single time you're left with just this perfect friction fit that you really are lucky to get if you just creep up on the fit. It doesn't matter how, how hard you try, you won't get the fit that you get with this thing. Uh, and that's because you have that set screw on the Kerf Maker and you can just keep just dialing it in until you get these perfect fits. And you can see, as expected, I've got it here and that fits in perfectly to the dado and it's, it's really nice. All right, so quick update on the box now. You're probably wondering why I cut the dados here with this overhang. Well, the reason is I wanted to use the Kerf Maker that I showed in my last video. Be sure you guys check that out if you haven't seen it. But I wanted to use the Kerf Maker because it makes this fit so perfect every time. But you can't use it for a rabbit. I'm still trying to figure out a way to use it for a rabbit, but I haven't thought of a good way yet. That said, when I put the sides on, I actually like this bit of overhang that I really like the look it has. The problem is because of the dado for the bottom here, that's going to show through. But I've got a pretty cool idea of how I'm going to remedy that. Well, I'll go ahead and pause here and explain what happened. As I was going to fix this problem that came up, I had the box, this is after I had it glued up, and I had the box on the table saw, and I knocked something, the box fell off, and the joints didn't split, but it actually split the wood itself, and it tore into two pieces. So I had to go ahead and just get another piece of the monkey pod and start from the beginning again. And that meant doing the whole milling process again, starting at the joiner, getting a face parallel at the planer, 
uh, cleaning up the joints with the jack plane and doing all the layout work. And this was, you know, I was frustrated, but that's what happens sometimes. So I quickly got back to where I was. Luckily, it's not like the project was finished. And so I was able to get caught up to where I was pretty quickly. So getting back to where we left off, what I'm doing here is going ahead and putting some really slight chamfers on the inside of these dados. And that's because you'll see better when it's put together. But these spots will be hard to get to to do any profiling once it's glued up. So I'm just putting these chamfers so that there's a really slight reveal between the box sides and the ends. And it ended up giving it a nice look in the end. Now before I do the glue up, I just go ahead and sand everything, especially the insides of the box up to 220 grit because this will be, again, difficult to get to once it's all glued up. And the glue up went, you know, not as good as expected because the joints were so good that they actually, as soon as the glue was in there, it was really stiff to get everything together. So I need to either make slightly looser joints, which I don't want to do, or find a glue that just helps with getting tight joints together because I was frustrated with how this glue up went. Now while that was gluing up, I went on to getting started on the lid. And so I cut it to rough length and then brought it over and started cleaning it up with the hand, the jack clean. Now I don't remember what kind of wood this was, or I don't even know what kind of wood this was. I had it laying around, but it planed really well. And it did take a while as it always does to get it flat. But um, when it planes easily, it's not too bad. So you can see here, I've got a lot of curls from planing. And now I got to sharpen, so I'll go ahead and just leave the sharpening to explain itself. So with the lid finished, uh, as far as getting one face flat, I brought it over to the planer and started getting the opposite face flat. And then once that was done, the uh, glue up was pretty much finished drying. So I brought it over and started putting in the rebate for the bottom. So again, this one didn't have the dados, so now I'm using the rebate to put the bottom in and recess it in. And uh, I didn't have a router table at this point again, so I'm just carefully doing this with an upright. And there's enough reference surface on the edge of the box to get this done safely, but it's, it's just not my preference. But that's going to, of course, leave you with rounded corners, which I then come in. I like, I like to clean them up to sharp corners because it kind of shows the craftsmanship. But I guess so does rounding the corners of your bottom. But I find that more difficult than just squaring up the round corners. So... Again, you have to be careful because if you try to take too heavy of a chop, you'll end up sometimes splitting that joint between, you know, the side and the end and that dado. So you have to be really careful and just keep having the material until you're within about a millimeter and then go to your shoulder line. And if you follow that process and practice your chopping with a chisel, you'll be able to get these kind of perfect square results every time. And they're really pleasing once you're done. And uh, I liked how they turned out. So after those were squared up on the inside corners, I then start referencing that inside dimension to get the bottom cut. Now you can even use just two sticks or two pieces of scrap and some tapered or clamp for this. I happen to have this little setup jig that helps me do that. 
And then I bring that dimension and I set it up and reference that on the table saw. And then I can just cut that bottom to the correct length. And then I go ahead and cut that to width. And this is again some sloppy plywood. I wish I'd used like a veneered plywood or something. Even Baltic birch plywood would have been better. But this is all I had on hand. But I'm going to be sure to upgrade the wood in the future for the bottoms. Because it kind of takes away from the final look a little bit when you use such rough wood. Now that, gave, that had such a good fit into that recessed bottom that I just didn't use any clamps or anything. I just put down a bead of glue and pressed that in. And then while I was drying, it was back to the lid again. So here I've got the yellow heart that I used in that my last project with the yellow heart inlays on the candles. And I'm just cleaning that up and getting that milled and ready here. The yellow heart can be pretty grainy and have a lot of you know figure in it as far as planing, which can be difficult. But I was able to get through this side better this time, which was nice. And then I'm rip, ripping that to some thin strips at the table saw. And that's where the ripper comes in really handy because I can cut quarter inch and eighth inch rips and it really helps do that safely. Now once that's done, I bring it over and use the jack plane to clean up the, any burn marks or any saw marks on the show face for those. And once those are prepared, I go ahead and start putting in the dados on the lid itself. And I use a flat bottom, uh, flat ground bottom blade for this so that I don't have to worry about cleaning up any sorts of ridges. And after a lot of back and forth planing down the yellow heart until I get the perfect fit, uh, I can finally add a little bit of glue and just press those in. And it does take a lot of work going back and forth between the lid and testing the inlay because I really like that to be perfect with no gaps at all. So it took a long time, much more than I showed here. but. When I, I was really happy with how it turned out and I just used a sacrificial block to just carefully mallet that inlay in after putting the glue in. And I let that dry for about 10 or 15 minutes and then I brought it over and used the flush trim saw to cut those ends off. And here you can see how you did on the inlay because you'll see if there's any gaps between the yellow heart and the bottom of the lid there. And you can see I got these really just pretty perfect, easily the best inlay I've ever done. And I was really happy with that. So I cut off the two ends on each sides. And once that's dried, I bring it over and again, use the check plane to clean up the lid. At this point, I feel, felt like I'd planed this thing a million times, but this helps flush up the yellow heart with the rest of the lid. And I just keep doing that until I'm able to take full passes across the full length. And then I come over and I just clean up the ends. They're already to size here, so I just take off a tiny bit to clean those up. Now before I call the lid good, I put on a sort of a medium chamfer on the lid top. And this is to kind of go along with the rest of the geometric look of the box. I decided to do the chamfer over the round over for this reason. And here you can see how the inlay turned out. It turned out really perfect. I mean, there's no gaps and it's really beautiful. It really accents the lid. Now I had to figure out how I was going to be attaching the lid to the box and I came up with this kind of unique idea of using rare earth magnets that were then plugged by dowels to help reduce some of the, you know, how strong the magnets were between the lid and the box. So what I did is, you know, marked out the lines and then started drilling holes for the magnets. And I'm just using a Forstner bit to do this and I just carefully set the depth for the magnet thickness plus like a... I think I use maybe eighth inch plugs or quarter inch plugs as far as thickness on those. You just have to find something that the magnets are still strong enough to hold uh, even through the dowels, but they were really strong magnets. So once I had those all drilled out, I used a bit of CA glue and just press those in using the dowels that I'll be plugging them with. You have to be sure that you don't put, you know, positive to positive or vice versa on the magnets with the lid because otherwise when you try to attach your lid, it's going to be repelling each other. So Pay close attention, don't just blindly put the magnets in. Now with those in, I start just gluing in the little plugs, and these are just little, I think they're little birch plugs, and I just put those all in and flush trim those. I don't show the flush trimming, but it's the same as, you know, any flush trimming. So then I was on to making a little handle for the lid. So here I'm using a 3D print template on another piece of the monkey pod, and I'm just carefully flush trimming this at the router table that I finally was able to get. And then I bring this over and clean it up with a card scraper. Now, if you haven't gotten into using a card scraper, I, I mean, you'll never really go back to sanding except for maybe finish sanding because you can make such quick work of cleaning up tear out or any, any kind of 
you know, bad grain on wood. So for instance, I had, you know, a bit of burn marks on the top from using the flush trim bit. And you'll see literally with about seven or eight passes here with the card scraper, I'm just able to get that burn mark out. And that would normally take, I mean, no joke with an Orville sander, even that could take like two or three minutes of sanding or more. And at that point you'll have a hollow or something. So the card scraper is really great at doing that sort of thing. Now I decided to use dowels to connect the lid to the, or the handle to the lid. And that's just to kind of go along with the look of the dowels that are already being used to attach the lid to the box. And that's just a matter of carefully laying out your holes on the handle. And then I use these little dowel centering uh, pins, I guess you'd call them, they're half inch. They go right into those holes. And then I carefully line this up with center lines that I made on the lid. And then once I have that as close as I can, I press it in to make marks. And if it's not perfect, it doesn't matter because those holes will at least line up and that's all you need. And then I bring this back to the drill press and these are through holes for the dowels. And I didn't put tape on the bottom foolishly and I got some tear out on the bottom, which I was pretty disappointed with. So if you're doing this step, make sure you do something there to help prevent tear out. But luckily, even though the tear out was there, the handle of course went on flawlessly. So I just put a little bit of glue because it was a tight fit as it was and I made sure to clean up any squeeze out before it dries. And then it's on to just final preparations for finishing. So I just go up to 220 grit with some sandy blocks and um, to go, you know, I take some rags and mineral spirits to clean out all the dust. And then I go to my go-to finish, which is the Minwax wipe on polyurethane. And I really prefer this, at least for box making over any kind of wipe on because you have so many tight spots you have to get to. I just find it much easier to get to all of them with the wipe on. So I really like how though actually how the monkey pod kind of took the finish. I wasn't sure what it was going to look like. I would never worked with it, but uh, it turned out looking great. So I was really happy with it. And let's go ahead and uh, close out the video. Enjoy some of the final shots of the box. Alright guys, well that does it for today's video. Um, I'm actually super happy with how this turned out. I think the yellow heart inlay was some of the cl cleanest work I've done. And I really like how the, you can see it almost, the magnet's almost like the box up by itself. Uh, but I really like how that magnetic lid turned out with the dowel just kind of concealing it. Uh, so there you go. I love building boxes. Here's another nice one. Uh, we'll see what I do with it, but if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.